Hey, we're here at CES 2013 with the esteemed Patrick Norton. Hey, Patrick. I'm esteemed? Yes, absolutely. That means I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have been to quite a few CESs in your time, right? I think this is 15. So, you've been to so many. Yes. What are you noticing this year as opposed to past years? I, I think the big thing everybody knew coming into this one was 4K. 4K yes. televisions. 4,000 you know, 4, pixels by 2,000 pixels. Four, four times the number of pixels of 1080p. Woo! Yay! Yay! <laughs> I mean, look. You don't sound excited. It, well, it's 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 well. You go from like videotapes to DVD. It's like whoa, that's a that's a big improvement. You go from standard definition television to HDTV. Wow, that's a mind-altering improvement, especially when you have Blu-ray. Um, 4K is really interesting, but it's it's sharper, it's crisper. Um, but it, to me, it's not as mind-blowing as going from standard def to HDTV. That said, I haven't seen movies on it. I haven't seen sports on it. I mean, there's... All you've seen is the demo videos. And there's, yeah, the Soaring Eagle video, right. you know? Ooh, I'm actually looking at... I, did you say you saw grass growing? Grass growing, growing. Yeah, yeah, Samsung. But it was the most no beautiful... No paint drying, though. Be the most beautifully detailed <laughs> was, grass you've ever seen in your life, right? That's that was actually 4K. on an OLED TV. That was actually on... Correction, that was on an OLED TV, it, but it, it still looked great. It could be a 4K OLED, OLED it TV. It could be. The, okay, OLED HD TVs from LG and a bunch of other places, we've been waiting for those for years. The colors are absolutely phenomenal, right? You saw mm -hmm. that? The colors they are they're rich, they're saturated. And I'm sitting here like, I've already recorded like nine videos. Um, Theo headphone amplifiers. I finally got to meet some of the people from there for like audio file headphone amplifiers. Um, Canon had their new PowerShot N. And it's really funny, there's no, there's no button. Right, there's no shutter button on it, which is mm -hmm. really weird. You you hit this little ring in front of the lens, or you oh, touch the I screen. Oh, I heard about this. Yes. And they have this sort of. That sounds a little awkward, though. You know, I thought it was going to be ridiculously awkward, but I'm playing with it and it's working. And oh. what was interesting, what was awkward, was looking at their sort of pseudo Instagram, what they call the creative mode. Like you flip a switch and you take your picture, and it's like ching 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 ching. Filters. It, it yeah, it does five <laughs> little filters, and I'm like, that's so weird, but. You know, it's 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 Canon. It's a power shot in. It's yeah. got good glass. It's got a good sensor. It looks like it'll take great pictures, and it's tiny. And I like the idea of having a tiny camera that actually takes good pictures. Yeah, definitely. So, anything else rocking your world this year? Any products? Uh, Lenovo it was really interesting. Uh, Lenovo had the 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 Idea Center Horizon 27-inch tabletop PC, where it goes from a you know it's a it's a Windows 8 touchscreen and it folds flat, and you can actually have multiplayer gaming going on, like 10-point multi-touch. So they're like, yeah. kids can play games on it. We have educational games for it. EA is doing Monopoly. Ubisoft has a bunch of shooters and adventure games. And that's really interesting when you actually, you know, I mean, Intel Intel managed to make it sound really cheesy. It's like, we're bringing back Family Game Night. And all the people in the audience are going like, we already own Yay, Scrabble. I we don't Family Game Night. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't need a $1,700 PC to play Scrabble. But, you know, then I brought it on. Adam Sessler and I started playing games on it uh, uh, at the, the Xbox show we did. And it was really, he was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. I know these people are like hardcore board gamers and they would love this and I'm like Adam Sessler who has reviewed every game in the like last 10 years is going gushy over this he's doing Monopoly Ubisoft or games and that, while, while we're still here anything else you want to mention uh, Toby T-O-B-I-I -I, I want to say it's a Swedish company they called it Gaze Interactive Computing it was another thing that was in uh, Intel one of Intel's demos where they're about perceptive computing basically not using a mouse to keyboard tracks your eyeballs Right, oh, so right. You, you calibrate it and you look and you're shooting things in a video game by looking at them, which actually by day four of CES <laughs> feels really good, like die zap and a Getting laser all the goes. Out. <laughs> but you know, when you're sitting there and you can scan down on the screen and all of a sudden the article you're reading scrolls up and you look to the left and it pokes to the next article, that was really compelling and really neat. They're gonna have a consumer version, SDKs are out now, consumer versions are coming uh, probably like September next year. That was Very actually cool. really nice. Like, controlling a computer with your eyeballs. Yeah, you can save yourself some carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> and Lord knows probably, we need to do that. Probably ruin your eyes, though. <laughs> well, it, you know, eyes, wrists, <laughs> make a choice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you heard it here first, a future of 4K and tabletop gaming and eyeball stuff. Eyeball zapping. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us, Patrick. My pleasure.